Planet Zoo, a game I've spent at least 500 hours playing since I got it, and yet I don't have a single zoo to my name. Well, maybe that one, but that one's just for conservation credits, so it doesn't count. I'm talking about a proper zoo. And I think the main culprit for this is all the decisions. We're talking at least 74 animals, not including DLCs, which I have none of, by the way. However, I do have the deluxe version of the game, which takes the animal count to like 77 animals. And that's just too many decisions, so I'm doing a little wheel make choices for me. I let it choose how many exhibit animals I would have, how many habitat animals I would have, and what those animals would be. I let it choose what continent and biome the zoo would be in. Hell, I even let it decide what terrain I would have. By the way, the only thing I didn't let the wheel choose was the difficulty of the zoo, which I put on hard mode. And with that all done, I finally loaded the game. So to start, I went with the best strategy, which is mooching off of the starting electricity as much as possible. I laid down the path so the power would cut off so that I could make everything within that boundary, and after setting that up, I bought some Nile monitors, and I even got bougie with it and spent some conservation credits for the good stats. Now the Nile monitor habitat was the only one I put thought into before beginning, so this was probably the easiest habitat to build. And even though I knew exactly what I wanted to build, I still had to remake it a couple times because it was far too small. I eventually figured it out and could start on the area for the Nile monitors themselves, but only after adding a path for the simpletons that would come to watch a large lizard do nothing all day. <laughs> also, talking about simpletons, I definitely didn't forget to connect the path to the Animal Trade Center and I definitely didn't spend a large amount of time wondering why this idiot wasn't bringing me my lizards. Yeah, he might not be the the idiot in this scenario, but whatever, at least the lizards were finally in the pen. Where I gave them a pond, toys, lily pads, rocks, rocks, and more rocks. A very large, funny looking lizard really couldn't ask for more. Which is why I gave them more by adding trees and bushes, but not too many because the, that would exceed the, uh, the, the foliage needs and make them unhappy. And unhappy animals means unhappy guests, which means that these donation bins wouldn't get as much use and that's just not conductive to, to money making. And after letting the game run for a while, I had doubled my money and added a shopping area around what will be my first two exhibit animals. Also, the guests were complaining about being hungry and thirsty, but all around they were really happy with the zoo so far. Which maybe isn't saying much because there was just large lizards at this point, but it's a start. However, when I went to buy the tarantulas and the boa constrictors that I was going to put into these exhibits, there just weren't any females. So I went about decorating, adding benches, making the staff area look better and whatnot, until finally they were in the market. Granted, neither of them had good stats, but honestly it took so long to get them, I didn't care. Also, I'm not going to decorate any of the shops or exhibit habitats yet, because now monitors were getting busy, and I needed to make an overflow area because there's just not enough room in the pen. There was barely enough room in there for the three of them, and there's no way babies wouldn't exceed the limit. So I just used the same fence to make a smaller pen to move them to once they were bored. And th this very well might be one of my favorite things. I don't know why, I just think it's small and quaint and I quite like that. What I like more, however, was this, an albino baby. I like the challenge of getting the color variations without just buying them from the market. It's like finding a shiny Pokemon, which I don't know why I compare it to that because I've never found a shiny Pokemon. <laughs> I also did something that I don't bother doing usually, but I gave her a name. I named her Bert. She just really gave off Bert vibes, to be honest. The next animal to be added was the bonobo. Now, I don't really know what to do for a monkey habitat, but I, I knew it needed a water barrier and a lot of foliage, and I figured with all that foliage, the guests probably wouldn't be able to have the best view, so I sunk the enclosure down to try and help with that. I also had to add this really ugly bit in the back because I wasn't sure how else to let the staff enter the habitat. It was looking fine. Uh, it was a real trust the process sort of moment. I decided to start by adding all the climbing stuff first so I could shape everything else around those structures. I also wanted to make their hard shelter spot elevated because I just thought it would be nifty and help with the viewing issue. I had a hell of a time trying to decide what to make the walls out of though, but eventually I landed on the mud walls. But after checking the traversability area, I realized I couldn't actually climb it, but adding this log fixed the issue. 
which led me to the next step of adding the abundant amount of foliage these guys like. There's really not much thought put into this part. I picked a couple of trees and bushes they like and really just went for it because they don't have a cap on how much foliage they want. I even added some stuff to the water just because I, I could. I did score big by finding these leaf piles, which I completely forget about after this build, unfortunately. <laughs> But I also found vines, which really added something nice to the vibes of the enclosure. After I was happy with the greenery, I switched my focus to the wall of the habitat, which at the moment was really dragging the presentation down. So I fixed that with rocks and more rocks. Did I mention that I used rocks? I used plain rocks. I used mossy rocks. I put rocks in the water. I used a lot of rocks is what I'm trying to get at. Eventually my rock escapade came to an end and I added fencing around the edge to finish it off. Then the fencing looked a little plain to me, so I went and added bushes around it all. I think it really helped with wrapping it all together and finishing out that bonobo habitat, which I was really happy with. The guests also thought tickets were underpriced, so I just went ahead and uh, increased that by just a little bit. After finishing the bonobo habitat, I went about doing some of the busy work of Planet Zoo. I decorated the exhibit animal enclosure, which I think it turned out rather nice. I scattered benches along the path at random intervals. I also threw a trash can and a recycling bin next to each bench so the guests could stop being heathens and throwing trash on the floor. I wrapped up some decorations for the shops and bathrooms and also decorated the staff area I built behind the bonobo habitat. And take a peek at this, while I was working on all that, the bonobos had a baby. Very nifty. But then they'd wrap up things I wanted to get done before starting the next habitat. Now my original plan was to have this lake be a nice break between all the habitats and just an opportunity to play with some decorations, but then I remembered that the guests wouldn't appreciate the scenery as much as I do. In fact, they would probably just complain about having to walk so much, so I switched up the plan and started making the saltwater crocodile habitat. I threw down some null barriers under the elevated path I laid down, but ended up doing a lot of deleting and rebuilding before finally settling on something I was happy with. Then was a long and tedious process of placing rocks. I took a break in the middle of placing rocks though, to make this custom fence. I went ahead and threw the crocodiles in there, after I had it all enclosed, and then I went back to adding rocks. Mossy rocks this time. And when the last rock was placed, it was looking quite neat. I had the idea to put a little island in the middle. Not only to uh, make it look better, but also I thought it might help. Because the guests who are walking along the edge of the path up top won't have a good view and I thought it might help with that and the next step was adding the foliage. I focused a lot of it onto the little island and in the water but the saltwater crocodiles don't like a lot of plants so I was kind of limited. <laughs> but look how neat this looks if I take the water away. Yeah, very cool. I did that so I could add some variation to the water depth which I think definitely did something for it. I added some smaller, final details, and the saltwater crocodile habitat was finished. After a while of letting the game run, there were some saltwater crocodile babies, and all the non-monitor babies were maturing, which left the baby overflow area empty. I sold most of them, but don't worry, I kept Bert, the best one. I planned on moving her into the main non-monitor habitat after the first generation passed. The next habitat I started was for the bongos. I had to keep in mind while making this habitat that the bongos get easily stressed out with guests watching them. So I made the front half of the habitat water so the guest would be a good distance away in hopes that it would keep the bongos from stressing out. But to be honest, it didn't really work in the end, but it looks nifty, so whatever, I suppose. I used green concrete walls for the rest of the habitat barrier, but I had to stop in the middle of adding them when I realized that I had made the habitat way too big, so I fixed that quickly and was left with this to work with. And I don't think it should be a surprise that the next thing I did was pull out some rocks. And I just lined them around the front to make sure there actually weren't any spots the bongos could jump out of before finally putting them into the habitat. I wanted to make their shelter out of rocks because I thought it would be fun. And it looked kind of janky to start with, but it comes together, I promise. I just wanted to make sure all their required needs were met before focusing on decorating the habitat. And to start with, I put some of the trees above ground, as they should be. And then I wanted to try something I'd seen other people doing and sunk the trees into the ground to look like big old bushes. And to say I liked this look would be an understatement. I put so many trees down around the habitat and it looked awesome. 
before I was even done with the habitat, the bongos were already starting to get stressed, so I put up some of those quiet signs in the hopes that it would help, and went back to throwing plants everywhere. But I had finished adding the plants and they were still stressed, so I put up some one-way glass. And lucky for me, it worked wonders and all their stress started going down. And that was it. The bongo habitat was finished. Definitely one of the prettiest things I've ever made at Planet Zoo. I also really like that the zookeeper has to walk through all this foliage. It amuses me. <laughs> but that's the fourth habitat down. Six more to go. But first, watch this bongo give birth to the cutest little shit ever. For the fifth habitat, we're playing with hippos. Pygmy hippos, to be exact. I really wanted to try something new with this habitat, so after placing the path, I went through and raised what was going to be the back half of the habitat. Also, I think because I was having trouble figuring out how to make this work, I just didn't record some of it, so excuse the jumps in progress. The front half of this was going to be an underwater viewing area, and my feeble brain was having a hell of a time trying to get that to work. My initial thought was to make the back wall of rocks. I know, shocking. But I scrapped that and went with wood berries instead. I added one of the chunky dudes in the habitat and realized it was way too big, so I reworked the size a little bit, and it still ended up being way too big in the end, but at least I tried. And then I added a path along the back of the barrier. Well, first I struggled with the elevated path for like five minutes, but I got there eventually. Then I went through adding all the enrichment items, specifically with the guest viewing spots in mind, because I had made this habitat way too big and it was- it needed all the help it could get. Also, look at this. <laughs> While I was setting all that up, some of these fellas meandered the way to the water. Very cute. What's not cute is the shelter I put in the habitat, so I, I started to work on a custom one. It actually wasn't as difficult to make as I thought it was going to be. I think it came together looking very classy for these pygmy hippos. But I didn't dwell on it too much because I really wanted to get to my favorite part of making a new habitat, adding the foliage. Can we count how many times I say foliage? I should have looked up another word to use in place of foliage. It, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I just think adding all the plants really helps finish off the habitat. You can also hide all the ugly parts with it and that's also a big plus. Talking about hiding ugly parts, I really wasn't happy with how the back wall was looking, so I lined it with rocks and lowered the wood barrier, which still didn't look great. So I did the next best thing and covered it with trees and bushes. I even got a little crazy with it and put a tree in the water, which really helped fill it out, seeing as it was looking just a little plain. I finished off the hippo habitat by adding a nice little rock patch in the water. I added trees to the back path and added some detail to the staff building outside of the habitat. I've also been adding shopping areas periodically throughout the zoo. This is the one I just added by the pygmy hippos, but I also put one by the saltwater crocodiles and there's one over by the bongo habitat. Mostly just something I needed to do to keep the guests from getting angry about being hungry or thirsty, because they will throw tantrums and vandalize everything in the zoo if they get angry. They're very rude. But rude guests aside, I was ready to start the next habitat, so I lowered the train to start the process of making a very similar habitat to the for the western chimpanzees, as I did the bonobos. And I was a lot more careful with how large I made the habitat, seeing as the guests really didn't like the bonobo habitat because they just couldn't get a good view. Which will often happen if you make the enclosure much larger than the animal's maximum requirement. But other than that, I wasn't sure of any other way to make a habitat for a silly monkey fella, so I just reused the same concept. I did work on adding some nice variation to the terrain though, so I worked on making some nice texture before trying. Big emphasis on trying, by the way, to make the shelter. But uh, yeah, the first pass looked like actual garbage, so I took out the thatch floor and replaced it with wood, thinking it would make it look better. But surprise, it still looked like crap. So I deleted the walls and figured they could just use the spot underneath the structure as shelter and the top would just be a spot for them to climb to. While I was working on that though, this pygmy hippo was getting ready to have a baby. Can we just talk about how it says offspring imminent? <laughs> it sounds like a threat. <laughs> it's my favorite thing ever. The little fucker was rather cute though. But back to the less cute monkeys. After I had their shelter figured out, it was just a matter of adding the enrichment items. And I even added this really fun bridge, not that the monkeys will appreciate it, but I thought it looked nifty. Then came my favorite part, adding a bunch of nature to the habitat, a bunch of trees, a bunch of bushes. The phase where it all starts 
not looking like crap. And I like to think that adding lots of trees and bushes, even if I don't know what I'm doing, makes it look better by default. <laughs> Especially throwing these vines everywhere and anywhere they could go. And I always save the terrain painting for last because you can add some detail by putting soil where the animals might walk the most and grass where they might not. Honestly though, it's just how I do it. There are definitely people who are way better at it than I am. But either way, I get the job done. I added a little staff area to the back and pulled out the rocks once again. And we'll skip through most of the rock mayhem because at this point it's just rinse and repeat. I finished all the nitty gritty rock stuff and added a fence around the habitat. And I must not have smoothed the ground as well as I had thought because it was very uneven, which left some of the fence floating, but I just placed bushes all around it. And now no one's gonna ever know it's not even touching the ground. I also got a little crazy with these bushes and flipped them on their sides to give a real overgrown kind of rock face sort of look. I just wanted to add something to distinguish it more from the bonobo habitat. They were just looking very similar for my taste. I think it might have looked a little weird, but not so weird that I didn't consider this habitat finished. And to wrap up this area of the zoo, I actually needed to backtrack to the pygmy hippos again and add the giant tiger land snails. And I haven't explained the layout of the zoo yet. Despite what it may look like, I did put some thought into what animals would go where. Specifically, what I did was organize them by region, considering all of them but the saltwater crocodile are from Africa. I think some of the exhibit animals also aren't from Africa, but they're kind of less important to the overall zoo layout. They just kind of sit in little boxes and look neat. I've also been using different colored paths for each region, and I'll continue to do that throughout the rest of the zoo. But yeah, that's just the rundown of the way I'm adding the animals, which is why I needed to backtrack and add the giant tiger land snail because I had forgotten to earlier and in my layout plan he needed to be in this area. I also decided to get the decorating done because after this was finished, I planned to let the game run for a while just to save up a nice amount of money for the next habitat I wanted to work on. This next clip is called, and I quote, Naha Monitor Died, Enter Bert. <laughs> That's literally what I named the clip when I saved it. Pretty self-explanatory. The last Na monitor passed away, so I added his plaque next to the other two, which had also passed away. I just didn't mention it because I wasn't sure how to slip it into the other segments without destroying what little flow the script already had. But either way, I was very happy to see Bird again. I do quite like this large, silly lizard fella. I let the game run for two more years after this, in which time I made absolute bank. Bert had babies. No albino Bert babies, but still Bert babies, so cool nonetheless. I worked on adding walls to structures and increasing my education rating to try and get five stars, which didn't happen yet, but I'm working on it. And by the end of the two years, I was sitting on a pretty 200k, so I figured I would start the next habitat, which I'm going to call the combined habitat because that's what I've called it in all my notes. But the main thing I wanted to do with this habitat was give it a large shelter building because the two species I'm putting in here are both hoofstock animals, and I always make the mistake of never adding enough shelter, but not this time. I also added a small outbuilding to the side for a staff area that I think, when it's all put together, gives it a, a really fun shape. I had this fella throw in the first hoofstock, the sable antelope, and then I started putting some rocks down as potential barriers, but quickly dropped that idea in place of just using one-way glass barriers. And then because I thought the one-way glass barriers looked too plain on its own, I added rocks along the bottom. I also added rocks along the top edge, but spoiler alert, I spent way too long doing that to just delete them in the end. So we're just going to skip past that. <laughs> I added these bushes to add some nice color to the barrier, only to goof up by not checking to make sure the sable antelope even liked them. They don't, so I had to delete all of it. They did like this very similar looking bush though, so I went through and replaced all the other bushes with this one. Which took forever, but I think it was worth it in the end. It also took up like half of their wanted coverage, so I called it good with the barrier bushes and started working on the actual habitat decorations. I even added a nice little pile of rocks in this habitat. I figured I'd use them for something other than just lining the habitat, and I think these little grass bits really add something nice. I wasn't able to add a whole lot because I was dangerously close to being over their coverage limit, but I think it looks quite nice. After finishing the rock pile, I set my targets back on the rocks lining the top of the barrier, 
and I spent way too long trying to make it work before ultimately deleting them. But because I didn't want to delete all the stuff around it, I had to delete them very carefully, which meant mostly doing them one by one. It did look a lot better though, and I decided to have the keeper add in the Thompson's gazelle before deciding to totally rework the water by adding deeper spots, and I even swapped out the pitched roof for something flatter. Just reworking some of the smaller details before finishing it off by adding education and donation bins around the habitat. I don't think I've mentioned it, but even if I don't show it, I always do add donation bins and education speakers around every habitat. I just figured it would be repetitive detail to bring up every time. I realized at this point that I hadn't made any elevated levels to the zoo yet and took a big risk by attempting some DIY terraforming. I've never been able to to make any sort of mountain sort of ordeal in Planet Zoo and make it look good. But I think this came together in the end. I added a shopping area and another staff area up here, and then I slapped down an exhibit in the middle of the shops and tossed some goliath beetles in there. Look at them, what nasty little things. But this was how it was looking so far, and the plan was to add the last two habitats up on this elevated bit. I put down what I needed pathwise and started on the cheetah habitat. One thing I knew I wanted to add to this habitat was an elevated viewing platform, so that's what I worked on first, and it was a hell of a process. I reworked both the barrier and the path so many times, but eventually I called it good and added the cheetahs to the habitat. Also, the only reason I have so many cheetahs is because the zoo I made for conservation credits is filled with them. I'm also thinking about doing a new conservation credit zoo, just something nicer looking. Maybe that's a hint to a potential video. Let me know what you think in the comments. I just thought it might be a fun challenge to make a couple unique habitats, but all for the same animal. Okay, I'll stop shilling my idea now, back to the zoo this video is actually about. <laughs> We're starting off strong with adding lots of rocks. My idea was that the cheetahs would be able to climb the big pile of rocks I put in the middle, which would be in perfect view of the platform I made for the guests. But uh, yeah, they couldn't climb it. So I left it for now and just worked on the barrier while I tried to come up with an idea. I had the thought to just add a log like I'd done for the bonobos, but it just didn't do what I needed it to. I even tried adding one to the back and it just wasn't working. So I decided to just worry about it later and completely moved on to adding the shelter they needed which led me to the leading rocks out from under the viewing platform and moving the barriers back, which made for the perfect little shelter spot. Well, at least it would have if it had actually added up to the needed shelter requirements. So for the final time, I redid the viewing platform. I also remembered at this point that the cheetahs do indeed need water, so I just added that really quick before I started decorating. It was gonna have to be minimalistic because cheetahs don't like a lot of coverage. They also hate every bush known to man. I had to just go down the list until they were okay with one of them. I focused most of the decorating around the rock pile and also got to do my favorite thing, which is sink bushes into rocks. I think it just adds something really neat to the look of things. And just as I was wrapping up the habitat, the first guests came by, so I made sure to get the donation bins down. I've also been changing the color for all the donation bins so that they kind of match the habitat they go to. It literally doesn't do anything, I just liked changing the color. <laughs> Either way, the guests really liked this habitat. The cheaters weren't climbing the rock pile, and the guests weren't going to the elevated viewing area, two things I spent forever making, but at least they liked the habitat. Moving right across from the cheetahs is where the western lowland gorilla habitat is going to be. I realized at this point that I should have come up with some more inspiration for chimpanzee and ape habitats. But I had already started, and I was ready to finish off the zoo, so I just noted it down for if I do any more Planet Zoo videos. For now though, I put a hedge barrier around the back half of the gorilla habitat just as a placeholder because I wanted to add a ton of plants like I'd done for the bongo habitat, but first I wanted to have all the required needs met. And I kept it relatively simple. I made them a shelter, added their enrichment items, and met their climbing requirements. Instead of adding rocks all the way around the habitat, I only wanted to add them to the front, so I went about covering the back completely with trees. Next was adding some plants to the water, even though no one will be able to see it, but I'll know it's there, and I think without it, the water looks too plain. 
The ground also looks too plain without a healthy dose of bushes, so I scattered them about and then added vines to basically everything in the habitat, especially the roof of the shelter, because the roof of the shelter was such a bright red color, and it just contrasted with everything else. But the vines definitely tied it in quite a bit more. It definitely didn't stand out as much. And then I got to adding the many layers of rocks. I started with normal gray rocks before moving on to rocks with moss on top, and then using the rocks that are nothing but moss. I also added some smaller rocks around the edge instead of just using bushes. I also did completely forget to add a berry at this point though, so yeah, I get back to it eventually. At this point, I was ready to add the last collection of dudes to the zoo so I could get to the final details, so I picked a spot by the cheetahs, placed an exhibit, and added the goliath frogs, which marked the last animal being added to the zoo. I went about adding the decorations to the exhibit, placing down donation bins, adding education boards, and it was done. Or almost done at least. The animals were all in the zoo, but there were still things to do. I was sitting on four stars, but the only thing standing between a five star zoo and me was the marketing, so I fixed that and got five stars going. Next was at least trying to fix the issue with the combined habitat. The guest absolutely hated this thing. And I think it all boils down to the fact that I made it way too big, which is a running theme throughout this video. I have a habit of wanting to make it way too big in place of making it way too small, and that often bites me in the ass. But I was hoping if I added a viewing area connected to the back of the shelter, it would fix the issue, because that's where they were mostly staying. Both the uh, Thompson's Gazelle and the Sable Antelope were spending like 99% of the time when they weren't eating in that shelter. So I put one-way glass in the walls and moved all the feeders closer to the glass on the outside. And only time would tell if this was going to fix the issue, so I moved on to the next issue for now. The bongos and the western chimpanzees were all bored. But honestly, I had been fixing, or trying to fix this issue at least, for quite some time. And to be honest, I think the only solution would be to regularly switch out their toys. But to be honest, if I'm playing a video game, I really don't want to feel like I'm babysitting a bunch of iPad kids. So that's just an issue that'll have to stay. However, it was time to address the rock climbing issue, and I found all these large climbable wood platforms that I was hoping would work. I played with it for a while, but eventually got it to the point that they could finally climb up the coal rock pile, and the guests could get the cool view I had imagined. The cheetah let me know how cool he thought the idea was before hopping down like a buffoon. To finish it off, I also added some support pillars so the platforms didn't look like they were just floating. I added some animal talk spots in places I wanted more guests to be. I also decided to add shops behind the combined animal habitat because guests still weren't going to the better viewing spot and I was hoping to attract them there with food. With all that done, I was satisfied with the state of the habitat and was ready to add the final decorations around the zoo to make it look more aesthetic. I added a lot of trees around the whole zoo and put rocks along the edge of the raised area before moving all the trees that naturally spawn when you make a zoo closer so they looked like they thinned out the further they got from the zoo. I also um, realized that I forgot to add railing to this singular piece of path, so I did that. And the final touch was finally realizing I forgot to add a barrier to the front of the gorilla habitat, so I just uh, I put a hedge wall in front. And that's a wrap for the first zoo I've ever managed to finish. I will say though, my favorite three habitats are the gnaw monitors, along with the baby overflow area, which I don't know if it counts as a second habitat, but I'm counting it, in the bongo habitat. If I do something like this again, I definitely want to incorporate the things I liked best about those habitats into future builds. But with that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, maybe consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye!